This is the Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. And welcome. You are watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Well, back by popular demand, somebody we haven't had on the show in a while is going to give you the real insight into why the economy keeps getting worse and the stock market keeps getting better. It seems like some kind of vampire squid, some kind of parasitic entity that was designed to uh, to steal from the poor and the middle class and give to the rich. Could that really be the case? Is that what America has devolved into? I'd like to get your opinion. Why don't you tell us email address kl at kerryletz.com. Right now, our good friend uh, Greg Manorino is with us. You find him at traderschoice.net. Greg, it's so great to have you back on again. It's been too long. It's great to be back. It's been way, way too long. I can't even believe it. It's kind of, I was like, wow. But you know, we're here now. We got, a, we got a lot to talk about. So let's do that. Yeah. So I watch your videos mostly regularly and you're very prescient in calling these moves as they occur. But one point that you made that is so obvious, but it really kind of struck me square in the, between the eyes was this concept that the stock market can keep getting better as the economy uh, deteriorates and arguably disintegrates. What is that about? Is that by accident? Is that by design? Why is this happening? Well, nothing is by accident and nothing, absolutely nothing is what it seems. Um, no, this is a setup. This is something that's been set up for quite a long time. I've outlined this a long time ago, how we were marching to a two-tier society, extreme haves, extreme have-nots. They are literally wiping out, systematically wiping out the middle class uh, a section at a time, and they're not done. They won't be done until it's gone here. Uh, and, and the market is going to keep going higher because we have a central bank who's buying it all. They're buying it all. So uh, the mechanism behind it is very, very simple. It's uh, currency devaluation. The Federal Reserve is deliberately, deliberately running an inflation machine. They're issuing debt through one door. They're buying it through another door. Henceforth, why we're seeing it now, something I've warned about for the longest time. It's in our face right now. It's astonishing to me how we went from, oh, there's no inflation to now we have a problem. Um, you know, there was no middle ground here. But again, no one should be surprised at all at what is going on here. And we're just in the opening act. This is just the opening act. So absolutely, the, the worst the economic news is, and we've been getting round after round of absolutely abysmal economic news. We haven't had a single piece of real good economic news in years, because if we did, the market would go down. But the more bad economic news we get, the more gleeful the market gets because it realizes the Fed will continue what they're doing right now, which is buying it all and increasing what they're doing right now. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fascinating scenario that we have right now. Um, at, at, at minimum, the Fed, we all know this common knowledge, is buying $120 billion worth of assets per month, which, which includes $40 billion in, 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 uh, in real estate uh, mortgage-backed securities in a market where housing is going through the roof. So they're creating artificial demand. It's an insane scenario to be in. But look, um, it comes down to the distortions, which I have warned about, we're going to get monumentally worse in this market. They are, and it's in our face, and it's going to continue until it doesn't. I don't sit here anymore and try to pick on a date or a month or a year when this is all going to come down. I Nobody knows, because this whole thing is or should, should not be where we are at all. But the fact of the matter is, it is. And it's going to continue this way until it doesn't. And then I will worry about it. But for now, it's very simple. We just stay on the right side of it. Um, you know, you, you understand what's the situation. Central banks are inflating on an epic scale. Uh, debt issuance, debt acquisition, like, like you cannot believe. So what does that mean for us? We need to be in hard assets. Like I've always said since day one, 
physical gold, silver, my favorite of all time. I also like platinum, palladium. I'm also a big cryptocurrency advocate. Um, if you follow my work, you probably know that. Uh, I also think people should be in this market one way or the other, trading it, uh, uh, buying large cap stocks that pay dividends. You know, take advantage of it. Don't let any of this get you get by you in this environment where they are determined to destroy you, period. Hey, and isn't that the truth? So cryptos are very interesting. I have a small position in cryptos. Honestly, I just like to watch the uh, action in it. Uh, but if you say anything critical about any crypto, they like come down on you. Like you just don't understand. Now, no. Bitcoin can go up. I think it can continue going up. But I think maybe right now it's getting close to an intermediate peak and it's going to take a hit. We've seen it do this four times already. Why is it blasphemous to think that Bitcoin might go down to 20,000 or even $17,000? Does that make me a know nothing about crypto? Because I think it price could actually go down? No, of course not. And we would expect that to happen. And like you just said, we've seen, I tell people, if you get involved in cryptocurrencies, yeah, are they speculative? Absolutely, they're speculative. Should we expect wild swings in the price action? Absolutely, because we've seen it before, like you just outlined. So yes, um, you, you know, look, nobody is, nobody can pick, nobody, me or anyone is gonna, can, should ever say that's a top or this is a bottom, okay? What we do is we put together in our head or you know information and try to come out with the best scenario. So we could say, okay, uh, you know, this is either a market top or market bottom. Whether we're talking about stocks, gold or silver, which is completely rigged, Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies. But the, the truth of the matter is, look, we're, we're speculators, all of us. Anybody who's buying a cryptocurrency, buying a an option or whatever, we're speculating, and we should expect to see from time to time, you know pretty wild swings in the price action, especially in cryptocurrency. So absolutely not. I would not be surprised to see uh, cryptocurrencies drop and then that bottom get bought up because it's not the regular guy and the girl, regular guy anymore buying this stuff. This is institutions that are, look at they did. I said, when Bitcoin went from like 60 some thousand to 27,000, that's a pretty big, pretty big drop. I said, look what institutions are doing. They're buying, they're buying it. They're jumping in here. Or BlackRock getting in here, buying it. Uh, Goldman Sachs, we just found out is opening up a, a crypto position. So, I mean, you know, look, I'm very bullish in these things. I remain bullish. I don't think anyone who's saying, hey, you know what, maybe it's overvalued, you know, based on whatever information they come up with, it, you know, look, I don't know everything and nobody knows everything. So maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. I don't know. I personally think cryptocurrencies in aggregate are going higher. Why? Because it's the environment. It's where we are at. It's what central banks are doing. Um, so you need to seek alternative assets to the dollar, which is a unit of debt, which we don't even own. It's owed, owned by the issuing central bank uh, and owed back to the issuing central bank plus interest they print out of thin air. So when you own, when you hold a crypto, it's yours, you own it. There's no, you know, you're owing it to anybody. So that's what I like about it. That's why I am a bull on cryptos. I started buying Dash recently at 280. It's over 400 right now, just like in a week and a half, two weeks. I think it's going much higher. Um, so again, look, there are people out here that are, for some reason, are dollar bulls. I don't understand how anyone could be a dollar bull in this environment. I think they need to have their head examined, quite frankly, unless they're seeing something I am not. All I do know is central banks are determined, especially the Fed, to devalue the dollar and issue in a new system, period, the end. That's what they're going to do. We're already seeing the opening salvos here. Look, People are getting all up in arms right now over this inflation issue. Expect it to get much worse by design because oh, yeah. the Fed needs to create a crisis in order to issue in their new system. It's always the same scenario. They create a crisis, they wait for the public outcry and they say, hey, we have a solution for you. It's always the same three steps, it will never change. Hey, it's like calling the arsonist to, to put out your house fire after. He's <laughs> yeah, it is, I love that. The same thing. <laughs> hey. And, you know, like, especially because these hedge funds through CDOs, through derivatives, they're all betting that the things are going to blow up. And then they go 
out of their way to make them blow up. And, and then we have what we have. You know, I hadn't talked to you since GameStop. All those, uh, all those naked shorted positions really got, the shorts got blown out. Uh, that to me, I thought was other hedge funds being predatory in nature and seeing the vulnerability and then using uh, Reddit and other boards to educate the public why they need to be buying these. And then they made hundreds of millions and the, uh, the uninitiated bought it and rode the roller coaster, right? You know, I feel very bad for what happened to people, a lot of people doing that whole thing, but you're absolutely correct. Look, um, the regular guy or the regular girl out here doesn't have a chance in hell uh, against these institutions and how they play the game. They know every single angle. They got it all covered. So, you know, they're going to put out propaganda. They'll actually spread it by design. They'll tell people to do something and then they themselves will do the completely opposite thing. So I did not get caught up in that in any way, shape or form. I didn't talk about it. I didn't tell people to get, I had a lot of people asking me questions about it. I was like, stay away. I was like, stay away from this. I, 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 when I see stuff like that, and this, this happens from time to time, I've seen this in my career, I just sit back and I, and I watch, like, like you said earlier, I just sit there and I just watch it all. And um, I just, I hope that people don't fall into traps like that. Unfortunately, they're going to, and they're going to continue to fall through the trap doors that are set for them. They're set for them. And I hate that. I am a very, very steady player in the market. I, I, I know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and I don't go crazy out of my way to jump in anything that's super highly crazy speculative. And if I decide to do something like that, I, I will be very cautious, okay? I would never put any money to work in something that I thought really uh, could wipe me out, nor would I play with a single dime of money I could not afford to lose, because then you're playing with scared money. Once you start playing with scared money, you're guaranteed to lose. So... You know, it's crazy to see what people end up doing. It's very, very sad how they're they're taking advantage of. And I hate that. That's part of the reason why I do what I do. I try to tell people, look, this is what's going on. The most stable way to take advantage of it, I try to lay out the, that and stay away from all that highly crazy, wild speculation in any particular asset. Seriously. Yeah, well, it just so happens I know somebody who made several million dollars off of GameStop and the other <laughs> stocks involved just following the Reddit boards. But yeah. unlike most, he got out at the top and he went back in after it retraced and went, got in and out four or five times and made a veritable fortune. But that's, awesome. that's just like, uh, that's not your average trader there. You know, no. like you say, they, they really tilt the, uh, scales against the individual. Look at what they did with IAU. They're redoing the ETF. And what does that do to the, uh, to the options on it? It destroys the options. Yeah. They're reformulating it. So whereas people I know, traders have upwards, should have had 100% gain because gold went up so strongly, wound up making 35%. And, you know, they write the exchange and the exchange just laughs at them. And these are pretty sizable traders, hundreds of letters going in. But, you know, when they're too far behind the eight ball, Wall Street rewrites the rules. That's what yeah. they've always done. Mm -hmm. They never lose. It's so true. I always tell people that, you know, there's a group of people out here that um, I don't know what they think. They don't understand the game. They don't realize that the institutions, they're, they're not going to lose. They're going to cause the regular guy and the regular girl to lose, period, the end, no, no matter what. And they won't get in trouble for it. They can do anything they want to. It's really the truth. Um, and the, the regulatory bodies, whoever they may be, they're going to turn a blind eye because they don't, they know the game too. And they realize that they have no power to stop it. Either that or they're on the take and they're getting paid off which is more than likely probably true as well. Look, I don't think we've ever seen more rigging and more corruption ever across the, all, all the assets uh, classes right now, everything than we're seeing today. Uh, and again, it's because we have, it all boils down to what I think the central banks are doing, especially the Federal Reserve right now, running the, the biggest crime in the history of the world right now. That's what they're doing. 
Um, and they, they, they're destroying the United States of America, they're destroying the world. This is a takeover. This is a literal takeover. Um, the central banks, in my opinion, the Federal Reserve uh, is the government and they will do anything they want. We don't have any representatives. They won't do anything to stop it because they're all on the take too. It's, it's corrupt from, from the top down. It's rotting uh, all over the place and it's a terrible thing to see. But again, what can we do? We got to find opportunity. We got to find places that we can make it work for us because you know we understand the, the issues. We know what they are. But the main thing for us to do is to take advantage of it, is to understand what's going on, stay ahead of the curve. And it, it's just, to me, that's what matters. And to me, it's just very simple because we know the bigger, I'm a big picture guy. I've always been. I never kind of like really lasered down on, on anything too much. I try to sit back, take in everything that's going in, look at that big picture and say, okay, what do I got to do? And what do I believe people should be doing as well so they can make this freak show work for them and not against them? That's such a great point. So I want to ask a question in a way that we won't get banned from a certain, by one of our digital overlords. Talking but, code. Yeah. Write, it, write yeah. it down. Hold, hold the sign up. I'll do pig Latin, maybe. But okay. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> There is a certain illness that's been kind of circulating around the planet, and uh, this has led to certain results that uh, you might find kind of shocking. Uh, and then we watch a hearing yesterday where we find out the government's actually a player in what probably happened. What's your take here? Like preordained, preplanned? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, this, this, look, what better way for central banks to finish what they started, that is to become the lenders and buyers of last resort, than to shut down the entire global economy? How can they do that? Well, they very, very simple. Introduce an illness, okay? Uh, have it played up by the mainstream media. Forget about, I mean, look, if you were to go on and look at the top causes of, of human the demise. Okay. Uh, this virus doesn't even rank in the top 10. Okay. So, you know, but, but again, this is what they're playing up. It's a scam demic. Like I've said, since the get go, this was engineered and we, we know who did it period. The end, who else had the power to shut down the entire global economy uh, and then jump in here and take full advantage of it in every way they possibly could. Uh, you know, you got big pharma working in concert, with the real government, which is the Federal Reserve. This has all been pre-planned. Nothing, nothing ever happens by accident, especially something of this magnitude. Uh, they really pushed that fear narrative. They got people to step in line and do anything they want them to do. It's all about control. And it's going to be about more control moving forward as they phase out the dollar in its current form, for which they are. Um, you know, they're going to track every single transaction we have down to the penny. Hey, Greg, can I borrow five bucks? I need it for a gallon of milk. I got, um, you know, whatever. No, you think you can't even do that anymore without having, well, at one point, uh, to, it's going to be tracked. Everything you do is going to be tracked via the new system that's coming down the pike here. But absolutely, this whole thing was a setup from the get go. Um, and I think most people are, trying, are starting to get hip to it. I really do. I knew it from the instant it happened, but I also knew. Unlike in 08 and 09, where I went into the fear mentality, and so much of it, Greg, you know from your own experience is what you experience in your mind. And during, uh, during the uh, 08, 09 was fear. I thought the whole system was going to collapse. This time, I was a little wiser and sat down with my partner. I said, this is the opportunity of a lifetime make more money faster than ever believed possible. And I think he thought I was kind of crazy, but <laughs> that's exactly what's happened. And so it's time to start seeing these things in terms of opportunity. There's a risk for sure, but it's all about opportunity. I love that because that's what I say all the time. I say those exact words all the time in my own video. I'm like, look, 
it's good to be a little afraid, okay? Because that gets you motivated at least to act, but you can't be paralyzed like a deer in the headlights. You got to act. If we understand the game, and I think we all know it, all of us that have a few functioning brain cells, well, that all, that's all you need. Then you say, okay, what, what, what are my resources and what can I do with these things to make the system work for me because it's twisted, it's upside down, it's been perverted, it's corrupted, and every other thing you could think about so good. Okay. We can't stop it, but we can play the game better than they are because we know what they're going to do before they're going to do it. Here at the end. Let's see, like with crude oil, every single time crude oil drops, what do they do? False flag, false flag, false flag. We, we know when they're going to happen over and over and over again. Uh, it's a crazy scenario with it, with it doing, but again, people are starting to get hip to it. This is such a sick environment we're in. But the, the sad thing about this is not that many people, not enough people really understand it. Uh, a lot of people believe that what they're seeing, oh, wow, what a shame. We just happen to get this illness that's making everybody, oh, what a shame. We're just spontaneously seeing inflation like it wasn't planned a long, long time ago. Oh, what a shame this, and oh, what a shame. But no, nothing is by accident. And I, I really hope people are starting to understand that. Hey, what about this uh, pipeline shutdown in the uh, Southeast here? Now, I have like a couple of theories. And they're kind of silly. And I'm not saying they're true. I don't really believe they are. But number one is Saturday Night Live, they do a hit on Elon Musk. It was totally planned out, totally designed, not so much to uh, drive down Dogecoin, which, you know, you can, you can think what you want about it but to make Elon Musk look bad. So, and who, who has the greatest motivation to make Musk look bad? Uh, certain uh, energy uh, interests, shall we say. So if he were to strike back and say, this is why you really need an electric car, and I'm not saying this happens, but obviously this thing has been orchestrated. Somebody's benefiting from it. Follow the money, right? Absolutely. I think, you know, nothing is silly. And you know what? That sounds very viable to me. I think that's exactly what's going on here. It's a crazy, it's a crazy situation because again, it, it, but it does fit together. It, it fits into the current narrative, the current fakery, propaganda. Expect more things like that to happen, but on a larger scale. More crises need to happen for them to literally finish what they started here. And this is a new paradigm, a new set of rules. And the whole playbook is being rewritten. Like I've been explaining to people for a very, very long time. And I see these things and I go, wow, well, wow, look what they're doing now. I mean, it's so obvious to me, as it is to you, obviously. You know, you, you know what you're seeing. And I, I love that. Because there are people like yourself, like me, who are able to see a little further down the road than I think most people are. Because, you know, that's the other thing is people are so caught up in their own, you know, struggles through life that they can't think. They're deliberately put into a box. They, and, and because of that, uh, they, 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 they suffer, they struggle, they don't know how they're going to make ends meet. Again, look, we're in the midst of a, uh, the creation of a slave society dependent on a monster government. So a lot of people are worried, a lot of people are scared, and more fear, more, more issues that are gonna make people more afraid are gonna come down the pike because fear is the, the best way to control someone. Make them afraid of one thing and you can control their minds. So this is what we saw with the scandemic and everything else coming down. And we're gonna see a lot more of this moving forward here, unfortunately. Uh, and, and, and people are going to be willing to give up whatever they have to, to get rid of that fear. And that scares me, let me tell you. What did that guy Schwab say? You're gonna have nothing, but you won't owe any money and you're gonna be happy about it? Yeah, that's Come exactly up. Schwab. Yep. Uh, Schwab. Yep. And you're going to be happy about it. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy because some people, as you know, I think we're seeing a very, very frightening shift with, uh, with, I think, especially young people, we're seeing them kind of want to be taken care of from cradle to grave. They want a monstrous government that's going to pay for them, pay for whatever they want. And, you know, obviously, you know, this is part of the whole, you know, two tier society creation, make people just, you know, make them suffer enough that they just will accept anything. And the young people, their minds are being twisted right now and being molded. And unfortunately, it's, it's a sad thing to see, but I think we all saw the writing on the wall a long time ago. 
Okay. And, you know, that's an example of that is the people who are least likely to be affected by this illness yeah. are the ones that are most scared of it. And the people who are most likely, like me, baby boomer, who actually got it but didn't kill me, were the least frightened of it. And that is bizarre because it's not based on fact. It's purely fear and emotion. You and I, we've lived through a lot of stuff. And we don't just uh, jump off at the first sign of something and arrive at false conclusions. We take our time to arrive at false conclusions, unlike the young people who instantly, they're in reactive mode and they don't think and they just react and that's it. I think because they lack life experience. I mean, you got kids today, what do they do? They don't go, my neighborhood is chock full of kids. But well, I don't see them outside. They're all in their houses, on their computers, on their little iPads, or whatever the heck they're in. They have no uh, ability to uh, interact. They can't think. They're being programmed. They're being absolutely programmed. So it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing. You know, I didn't grow up like that. You didn't grow up like that. You know, we were able to, you know, use critical thinking from a young, young age. But today, that's gone. Kids are incapable of doing it. They're blunted. They have this uh, affect about them that is different. I, I look at the kids in my neighborhood whenever I see them, and now like, there's something wrong here. This is not how a child is supposed to be. And, and for a lot of, you know, I, I think it's the parents' fault too. Uh, the parents have, have like, you know, like uh, shirked their responsibility to be parents and they, they want to pacify their children. So instead of like, I don't know, telling them to do something constructive, they're telling them to go, go on the computer, go on your little, play your little games and stuff like that. So look, they're creating mindless creatures that are unable to think. Uh, what else, you know, it's it's just the dumbed down society uh, getting dumber. Uh, I, I I feel very bad for future future generations. I really do. Uh, and but for the people like you and I who are able to think a little bit outside the box, it, it that presents opportunity too. Because if these people are going to be so stupid that that they want to, they willingly are are going to give up their competitive edge. Well, then you know what? I'm going to jump all over it. Nothing gets by me. Nothing at all. Hey, and that's uh, that's the way you should be because that's part of the survival instinct, you know. Mm -hmm. And and uh, nature hates weakness, so yeah. if we breed a bunch of weak people, nature is going to sort them out. That's what uh, that's what Darwinism is all about, and social Darwinism. Well, hopefully, something will happen that will lead to a mass rise in consciousness. That's really the only thing that can fight this. Greg, uh, we haven't seen anything like it in our lives, short of the, the Beatles uh, coming to New York, uh, playing in Shea Stadium. That was the closest we ever got, or the, uh, you know, the LSD uh, generation. But uh, but that was false consciousness. We need like real consciousness, uprooting it because, as Einstein said, and I know you know this quote, is that you can't solve a problem with the level of thinking that created the problem you gotta mm -hmm. gotta increase your consciousness and that's exactly what you're really talking about in a in a in a very practical way is how you run your business which uh and your life which uh, is really an example that can not only beat them at their own game but you can uh, stay happy and uh, enjoy your life in the process right Absolutely. I love how you put that because that's the main thing. I tell people again all the time, raise your awareness, raise your awareness, raise your awareness, question everything. That's another thing. Don't just ever take anything at face value. They're going to parade out some authority figure that is supposed to, or authority figures that are going to tell you, tell you what is going on and you better listen to me because this is the way it is. Because look at me, I, I'm ex, I'm this great person. I have all these letters behind my name, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't mean dog shit to me, okay? You do your own research, you know, put your, use your own God-given intellect. When something doesn't feel right to you, it's not right. So again, just, this is what they're doing. They're creating legions of zombies, people that just, Follow along mindlessly. This has some, been something that's going on for a very, very long time, but it seems to be more profound to me than ever before. Oh, for sure. Absolutely out of control. And I, I, unfortunately, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. But again, there are going to be some of us that can see through it, 
that can see a little further down the road, that understand what's going on and you know, take the best course of action for themselves. Instead of being strung along or led like a sheep to the slaughter, well, we don't have to do that. We can choose our own destiny if we just put our minds to it, period, the end. And that's, I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that's a great point. You gotta go check out Greg's work over at traderschoice.net. And uh, if you've got a question for Greg, let us know. Send it to my personal email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Sign up for a free newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Greg, thanks so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure. Great to be here again. Thank you. The Financial Survival Network.